Good day to YouTube. Today we're going to be making mini calzone stuffed with creamy ricotta and smoky ham. The combination of the rich ricotta and the smoky ham creates a perfectly balanced flavor that I think makes this calzone distinct. Roll on with the calzone. Besides from them being easier to eat and easier to dip into tomato sauce, there's an actually scientific reason I made these into mini calzones instead of larger ones. It takes a few more minutes to make a bunch of small ones uh, than it does to make one big, great big one. But the main reason I did, I chose to do that was because of this stuff. Ricotta cheese. You see, bigger calzones take a lot longer to cook. They're bigger, they're in the oven for longer, and it can be a detriment to the texture of the ricotta cheese. So, with these smaller ones, um, that outcome is mitigated, even if only slightly. But they also just happen to be really good for entertaining, even if the only person you're entertaining is yourself. If you want some in-depth explanations as to how to make pizza dough, check out my master pizza dough series. For this video, I'm just going to give you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do a very easy yet quite tasty uh, pizza dough. First, we're going to take 440 grams of all-purpose flour, add it to a large mixing bowl. Then we will add 730 grams of filtered water, 1.4 grams of instant dry yeast, and then whisk that together till bubbles start to form. Next, we add 30 grams of vital wheat gluten, 22 grams of diastatic malt, 35 grams of granulated white sugar, to 660 more grams of all-purpose flour. Whisk that together, then add to the top of our sponge. On top of that, we add a further 1.4 grams of instant dry yeast. Now we leave it to rest at room temperature for up to four hours. If you're in a rush, you don't want to wait that long, just do an hour or two, but four hours is best. Then mix the whole mixture together till it starts to form a dough and then knead on your counter for seven to eight minutes you can also use a mixer for this step then after those six or seven minutes add back to your bowl to which you will add 18 grams of olive oil and 20 grams of table salt mix it all until fully incorporated then you will knead this dough for a further four to five minutes or until it passes a window pane test lightly stretch it over a light source and if it stretches without breaking your dough has enough extension sensibility and elasticity. You will then fold your ball up, put it into an oiled mixing bowl and rest at room temperature for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you want to weigh out six 100 gram little tiny balls, ball them up and put them in your container of choice or on a tray covered in plastic. The next step is entirely up to you. You can rest them in the fridge for 24 hours to give them some extra flavor or just simply leave them out at room for a couple of hours till they double in volume and then use them immediately immediately after that. I always cold ferment my dough. Watch my series for more on why I do that. The only specialized equipment that I used in this video is my trusty cast iron pan. Most people have one of these. You could throw them directly on your piece of steel if you've got one. And I used one of these thingies. They're actually uh, empanada uh, crimps, crumpers, crumpers, makers. I used it just to make them look cool. They cost like $10 for a full set. It's cheap, you know, why not? But yeah, use your fingers. Use your, use your fingers like a nun I used to do if you want. Forget about it. If you want to support my video making enterprises, it's as easy as liking, sharing, or commenting on this video. Thanks in advance. Your dough balls should have been sitting out at room temperature for an hour and a half to two hours or until they've doubled in volume. And with about an hour to go, stick your cast iron pan in the oven on 500 degrees so it can warm for 45 minutes to an hour. Now we can make the sauce. And of course, as always, I use Sanza Mano tomatoes, 350 grams. This sauce is just going to be lightly warmed. We're not going to be cooking it. Half a teaspoon or two grams of salt and a teaspoon or five grams of sugar. And then instead of blitzing it up, just crush it with a spoon so it's nice and chunky and rustic. We'll add some stuff to it later, but just test for salt first. Then we'll be taking some cherry wood smoked ham and just chucking them into a medium high heat dry pan with no oil in it. This is just to remove some of the moisture from the ham and also give it some of that lovely Maillard reaction. You can actually see all that steam leaving the pan. That's the water coming out of the ham. Keep repeating these steps until you've got roughly six pieces of ham. 
then slice them in about a centimeter thick strip and then slice those strips in half. Next, we'll be making the filling with some low moisture, part skimmed mozzarella and ricotta cheese, equal amounts of each, 150 grams of each. Mix that together and season with salt and cracked pepper. After an hour and a half to two, the dough balls should have risen by roughly double. Lightly flour your work surface and add one of your little balls to it. It's not gonna take much work to push these out. They're just gonna be lightly pressed. Then if you've got your handy dandy little empanada maker, add your uh, dough disc, then some of the cheese mixture and some of the ham. And then on top of the ham, you will add some more cheese mixture. If you're just using your fingers, it's the same process. You do the exact same thing. You just don't use the little blue thing. And instead of crimping it with this, you'd be crimping it with a fork or your fingers and then tidy it up with a pizza cutter. You can use the little scraps for whatever you want. I was gonna make something with mine, but I became so exhausted after filming this video that I think they just went in the bin. By now your pan will be nice and smoky hot we're just going to add these little uh calzoni to the pan and place them back in the oven it should only take about four or five minutes to get them lovely and golden like this transfer them to a cooling rack these things are going to be hot as a supernova inside so before you attempt to even eat trying them you want to wait a good six seven minutes on the cooling rack then the sauce is just going to be brought up to about 200 degrees then taken off the heat completely add a tablespoon or 15 grams of butter and as much torn basil as you can eat stir it all together and the sauce is c'est bon it's done serve it in a little bowl and drizzle your little calzone with whatever luxury extra virgin olive oil you've got and aged cheese on top and then a good old crack of the old cracked pepperoonskis over the top of that then it's just time to put it in your calzone mouth that's all there is to it from here on out look at that gooey cheesy cheesy gooey Mop up some of this Spanish <clears throat> olive oil. One is a snack, two is a meal, three is a feast. Look, the close up dunk. There it is. Look at that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Let me know in the comments what you would do with your calzone. I'm also thinking about doing a fried version of this or just fried pizzas in general. I'm also going to tackle some good old fashioned uh, Italian street food favorites soon as well. If you made it to the end of this video, you truly are a fan and I do appreciate you watching.